Well, you know, Kevin, from time to time on this show, we like to take a quick run through the news in a segment that we call HatchyBT. Yes, let's play it. HatchyBT is, of course, a segment on our show where we take headlines from the week and we pull them out of a hat and we riff on them a bit until one of us gets bored with what the other person is saying, at which point we say... Stop generating. And then we move on to the next headline. So, Casey, should we use the, the baseball hat or the bucket hat? For I think this we week's? should use the bucket hat in honor of Rocky, the open AI employee who put on a bucket hat this week when demoing the new <laughs> her assistant. All right, I like it. Grab it. Right, do you want to do do you want to go first? Uh why don't you go first? Okay. Let's make will you mix them up for me? I, I want to yes. introduce now, some randomness we, we here. To, we have to mix up all of the headlines in the hat. Be sure to just like jostle and hit the microphone and as many times as possible. And yeah, we're jostling, we're hitting that microphone. Yeah, just this just, microphone is in trouble. Yeah. It's broken now, actually. <laughs> all right. Okay. First story. FTX customers poised to recover all funds lost in collapse. This comes from my colleague David Yaffe Bellini at the New York Times. Customers of the failed cryptocurrency exchange FTX are poised to recover all of the money they lost when the firm collapsed in 2022 and receive interest on top of it, the company's bankruptcy lawyers said last week. Under a plan filed in federal bankruptcy court, virtually all of FTX's creditors will receive cash payments equivalent to 118% of the assets they had stored on FTX. A judge still has to approve the plan, and it may still take months for the money to reach customers. Uh, this is an amazing story. That's true. Now, others have pointed out that if you had simply uh, taken the money you had in FTX when it all shut down and just like used it to buy Bitcoin, you'd actually be in a way better position than you are today. So it is not right to say that everybody sort of came out smelling like a rose here. But based on what you've said, Kevin, I do have four words that I would like to say to the people of the United States, and they are these, free Sam Bakeman freed. <laughs> No. He did nothing wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. That is not the moral here. So Sam Bankman Freed uh, has been sentenced. He is currently doing a 25-year prison sentence for his uh, his role in uh, this collapse. His alleged role. No, it's not alleged if you've been convicted <laughs> and sentenced and you're in prison. No, it's we can just say it. He did a fraud. <laughs> but this is an amazing result in part because... While Sam Bankman Free does appear to have been a, a giant fraudster, he did actually have a good nose for investments. So one of the things that he put money into Solana, which is a, a crypto token, um, part of the reason that they're able to return this money to creditors is because Solana has been booming. Bitcoin has also been booming. And some of the other investments that Sam Bankman Freed made, uh, including a stake in Anthropic, the AI company, have become much more valuable since the firm's collapse, which is just an amazing uh, testament to the fact that you can be a giant fraudster and still be pretty good at investing. Yeah. When this guy gets out of prison, I think he's going to make a great partner at Andreessen Horowitz. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's stop generating. All right. Your turn. Let's try another headline here. Bumble's founder says your dating AI concierge will soon date hundreds of other people's concierges for you. This is from Fortune at the Bloomberg Tech Summit in San Francisco last week. Whitney Wolf heard the founder and former CEO of Bumble predicted that singles would one day deploy AI dating concierges to help them find love. Her told the crowd there's a world where your dating concierge could go and date for you with other dating concierges. And then you don't have to talk to 600 people. So, Kevin... What do you make of this form of theoretical future dating? So she got a lot of backlash to this comment. I was at the the Bloomberg Tech Summit where this happened. And uh, immediately when it went onto the internet, people started saying, like, this is dystopian. I want to defend this idea okay. because I think we are, ba you, know, I, you know, I'm not on dating apps, but uh, my impression is that most people who go on these dating apps are already basically glorified algorithms, right? They they are using one of like three preset lines that they've come up with. They are basically trying to quickly assess compatibility, uh, but they're they're not you know they're not having real deep uh, authentic conversations, at least not right away. And if AI could save you some time by by going out and dating people on your behalf and saying this person's a loser, this person <laughs> this person's <laughs> wow. mean, um, I think this could save people a lot of time. What do you think? I, I do not think it would save people a lot of time because, you know, here is the thing. Um, you know, I'm also not on dating apps anymore. Hashtag soft launch. But what I remember <laughs> from when I was, was that oftentimes you would say to somebody, you know, hey, like, how's your week going? And they would just respond with, hey. And then you would think, oh, this person isn't super engaged. I'm going to move on. A world in which the person who responded, hey, is using a bot to do 
responses on its behalf is doing everyone a disservice, right? Because if this is a person who can't even be bothered to complete a sentence when I say hello to them, the odds are that I'm going to enjoy my time with him is just sort of like very low. So, you know, is there some world where some sort of AI something is helpful in, uh, you know, enhancing the online dating experience? I'm very open to that. But if it is essentially just AIs tricking each other into thinking that the other person is like a really good writer and has a huge personality, then they're going to be wasting even more time than people are wasting on these apps already. Yeah, I do think it opens up some interesting possibilities, but I, I can see how people would find it dystopian. Um, my main thing is like, I, I just hope that they... Um... What am I? What am I saying? What are you saying, Kevin? What am I saying? I've always wanted to ask you this. What are you saying? <laughs> yeah. In conclusion, I'm very glad I'm not single. All right. Stop generating. <laughs> Sonos says its controversial app redesign took courage. This is from The Verge. Sonos, the connected speaker company, released a major update to its its mobile app earlier this month. Uh, to quote The Verge, in the days since, customers have complained about missing features like sleep timers, broken local music library management, and no longer having the ability to edit playlists or the upcoming song queue. Customers were very angry about this. And in response, Sonos's chief product officer told The Verge, quote, it takes courage to rebuild a brand's core product from the ground up and to do so knowing it may require taking a few steps back to ultimately leap into the future. Casey, what do you make of this? You know, I'm not sure that I would say that Sonos executives' uh, move took courage here. I would say it seems more likely that they took uh, mushrooms or some <laughs> other sort of psychedelic <laughs> substance that sort of melted their defenses <laughs> until all they could do was give us the app that they did. Look, I have been in a daily war against my Sonos system for years now. When it works, there's nothing better. The problem is it doesn't work a lot of the time. <laughs> and so when I got this new app, I thought maybe they have finally solved all of my issues and i swear to the heavens kevin the volume slider in this app which let's just say is one of the core things i want to do <laughs> to my sonos system a lot of the time is adjust the volume it is not persistent it only appears when sonos sort of knows that something is playing anyway the point of the story is the number of things that this app could do could fill a segment much longer than chat no, i'm confused because it seems like the job of the sonos speaker should be fairly simple which is play the music that i want when I connect to it. You're um, so right, Bestie. I don't own a, a Sonos speaker, so you tell me. Is that your experience? No. My experience is I say, Sonos, please connect to Spotify, which is what I play music from, and Sonos says, I have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> I've never seen this man before, and I want you to leave my house. And I say, this is the entire job that I've given you. Yeah. So it's a real problem, and I wish a Sonos continued courage as they try to build their first functional app. All right, stop generating. All right. Oh, this is interesting, Kevin. Uh, inappropriate behavior shuts down the Dublin to New York City portal. Less than a week after two public sculptures featuring a live stream between Dublin, Ireland, and New York City debuted, quote, inappropriate behavior in real-time interactions between people in the two cities has prompted a temporary shutdown. The portals, as the sculptures are called, are the brain child of uh, a Lithuanian artist named Benedictus Gillis, and they were shut down Monday night after videos spread on social media of visitors misbehaving in front of them, including an OnlyFans model in New York flashing the portal, and people in Dublin holding up swastikas. So, Kevin, what are the odds of you just set up two giant cameras <laughs> in Dublin and New York that people would troll them? What are the odds? Close to 100%, <laughs> I would say. No, so I I was bummed out about this because I did actually think the portals were a cool idea. This is basically like a giant sort of screen that was placed in kind of a circular enclosure uh, that had a live streaming feed that where you could basically go up to this thing in New York City and see people who are staring into the portal in Dublin and you could kind of have like this wormhole between the two cities. And we could recognize our shared humanity. Exactly. But as it turns out, it was more useful for flashing and holding up swastikas. This is why we can't have nice things. Well, you know, Kevin, I'm Irish, and I have to wonder if there was just sort of something about our mischievous nature that, um, you know, led the New Yorkers to misbehave. I do also just like the name The Portals. You know, it's, it's sort of of a, of a genre with the sphere in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. I just think we need more more things of that nature, things that are sort of the, the titles of, of my Michael Crichton novels um, made into reality. But it is sort of like vaguely ominous. Yes. Yeah. All, All right, right, stop generating. All right. Oh, this, this one's for you. 
After 28 years, someone opened an unopenable door in Super Mario 64. This comes from The Verge. <laughs> on April 22nd, user Alex Palix one posted a video on Discord showing how he got through an unopenable knobless door, which everyone previously thought was impossible. To do it, he used a workaround in involving getting a mother penguin to push Mario into the door while also doing a turnaround move. Uh, it turns out if you use this technique, uh, you can open the door, but it doesn't actually save you any time in playing the game. Well, listen, I hate to tell you this, Kevin, but I think Alex Palix has made a terrible mistake. <laughs> I think some doors are closed for a reason, and I think an ancient evil has been awakened. And if if hell is unleashed in this country over the next weeks and months, I, we will truly only have Alex Palix to blame. Yeah. I mean, I truly do love the people that never stop playing video games, you know, like the speed run community for the Mario games or for Tetris. I mean, these people, the lengths that they go to to shave two seconds off their time to open the unopenable door uh, is truly inspirational. I also just hope that we have a national security plan that involves uh, elevating people like Alex Palix into sort of code breakers, you know, th <laughs> working for the Department of Defense. Like, we could put these skills to real use. I also want to say, for everyone complaining that the younger generation has no attention span, like this person, <laughs> the attention span on him, I'm super jealous. It's true. All right. Stop generating. All right. Oh, and this is, this is a good one. Man fools Waymo self-driving cars with stop sign t-shirt. This is from Car Scoops, which is where I get all my scoops about cars. An Arizona content creator, Jason B. Carr, this cannot be real, made a t-shirt with a Wait, his name is Jason His Carr. name is Jason B. Carr. <laughs> Jason B. Carr is like the Johnny B. Good of the <laughs> automotive vehicle right, world. continue. An Arizona content creator, Jason B. Carr, made a t-shirt with a stop sign to see what Waymo's autonomous test vehicles will do. In a series of videos posted to Carr's Instagram, he tested whether Waymo's self-driving vehicles actually stopped when they saw him wearing the shirt while standing on the sidewalk. He said he believes that the autonomous vehicle may be confusing him with a construction worker holding a stop sign. What do you think, Kevin? I think we are entering a, a bold new era of, of autonomous car hijinks. I think the people are already starting to find so many creative uh, and nefarious ways of messing with these things um, and I think that if I were Waymo I'd be very annoyed what do you think yeah I mean we see this already in San Francisco I mean not as much anymore but when the AVs just first started rolling around in the streets people would just walk in front of them to see what they would do I mean like the <laughs> confidence that people had in these AVs was staggering but this this was different because Jason Carr apparently figured Jason out Jason B Carr Jason B Carr apparently figured out that you don't even need to walk in front of it if you're just wearing a shirt with a stop sign big enough on it it will just stop even if you're on the sidewalk Jason B Carr woke up and once said today, I be stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> ah! All right, Casey, mm. that is Hat That's GPT. That's how we play Hat GPT. Time to close up the old hat. Hats off to you, Kevin. Hey, that's the end of this clip. If you liked what you saw, head on over to our page and subscribe and you can get the full podcast. We do a show like this almost every week on tech and the future. Head on over there now and subscribe.